Today's speaker is Sergei Kosakovsky Pond. Sergei did his graduate work with views on models of sequence evolution. In doing so, he wrote a computer program to do inferences under the models they cared about. This is nothing all that unusual. Many uh, graduate students write software packages, but Sergei didn't just write his own software package. He wrote his own language in which one could express an enormous variety of models, and then he wrote software to perform inference under them. This is, of course, the HiFi platform, which has a GUI, machine learning algorithms, R and Python APIs, and many other goodies. So we're very lucky to have Sergei introducing this work today. All right, well, thank you for um, inviting me. Eric, I appreciate this opportunity uh, to present our work. So it, it started out as mine, but now I actually have um, a considerable number of collaborators, which I will uh, make an effort to acknowledge. Uh, if you um, want to um, uh, follow these on your own screen, uh, there is a URL at the bottom of the slide which contains PDF of, this, of these slides. So you can just pull that down and uh, do whatever you want with it. So um, <clears throat> the first uh, thing that I would like to mention is that uh, when we started HiFi in 1997, we thought that was actually a fairly unique name. Um, and the name um, is something that my collaborator and mentor from graduate school, Spencer Muse, came up with. Because back in the day, uh, and, and now, I think uh, the greatest component of um, success for a software package is a catchy acronym. So pop star, um, you know, mega, beast, all these other things that, um, so HiFi was meant to stand for hypothesis testing using phylogenies, but then um, we realized that there was this other HiFi, which is actually pronounced hi fi and if you go to Wikipedia under um, hi fi you'll find the primary definition is a slang word used in the San Francisco Bay Area that literally means rambunctious. It's quite amusing. Occasionally I get email messages from very strange people asking me if I know that our package is the same as this, but I think the popularity of hi is fading, so we're okay now. Um, so the primary um, website of HiFi, if you um, wish to download and explore it, is this wiki that we've recently started populating um, as HiFi.org. Um, and uh, this is sort of the, where all the current uh, documentation and development and workshops and seminars and things like that go. And um, if you're ever interested in contributing or asking questions, you can always go there. Uh, so the, a bit of uh, a history about HiFi package is, um, so it's actually quite, uh, I want to say mature, but it doesn't really feel like 14 years to me, but we started developing in 1997. Um, and the original um, impetus to develop this package was to implement something very, very simple. Um, uh, the co several codon model based tests, uh, relative rate and relative ratio tests. Um, it's fair to say that we moved a little bit past that. Uh, the HiFi package is written in C++ and it runs on all major platforms natively. So it has about 90,000 90, 90, lines of code in the core. Um, about 60,000 lines of code are um, implementing the graphical user interface. But this section here, the 45,000 um, lines of code is um, the stuff that actually implements the analyses is uh, not written in C, it's written in its own scripting language, the HiFi batch language for standard analyses and models. So in that sense, um, just a little bit of history there as well. In 1997, Python was version one. I mean, R didn't really exist in any way that you would find familiar today. So basically, uh, back then, if you wanted to write something cross-platform and scriptable, there really wasn't a viable solution, which is part of the reason why uh, we decided to develop this domain-specific language. Um, so HiFi uh, supports multiprocessor and distributed systems. It has a fair number of users. So last time I checked, there are over 7,000 uh, registered users. and uh, uh, a fair number of citations, um, about 40 of which from, again, my cursory examination actually use HiFi for cast, custom analysis development and the rest of them just look, run of some of the standard stuff. Uh, there are over 100 prepackaged analyses. Um, it has a um, full featured native graphical interface for Mac, Windows, and X11, which are actually going to port to uh, probably QT in the next couple of months because there's really no um, a compelling reason to maintain your own. So here at the bottom, you'll see all the people that are contributing to HiFi, so on the left is Art Poon, who is a um, postdoc, um, or actually a, a site, who was a postdoc with me and now is at UBC. Next guy over is Lance Hepler, he's a graduate student. Martin Smith is a graduate student. Stephen Weaver, a programmer, and Spencer Muse, the original package co-developer. Uh, 
So HiFi, when we designed it, we sort of uh, tried to anticipate uh, the various categories of users that would um, uh, be taking advantage of the package. And our idea was to do, um, to, to basically try to cater to four different user groups. Uh, the first one is a prepackaged point and click analyses where uh, you know somebody reads a paper that we publish or somebody else published that uses HiFi. You can go and re-implement or re execute exactly the same analysis by just clicking in a couple of menus. So that was um, that still is the biggest venue by which we get our users. So DataMonkey uh, is .org, which you might have heard of if you uh, use HiFi as a web server that implements most most of the popular analyses online. We get a lot of users through that. A graphical user interface, um, which is basically an exploratory mechanism to poke around your data and design your own analyses graphically. It has some um, visualization result processing modules. But what we found um, using our, ourselves and developers use most often is a scripting language for uh, writing custom analyses. It was designed to be simple and flexible. And because we had uh, the fortunate, uh, so we guessed that um, it might be used for things like pipeline integration web services. Having a batch language made it, or a scriptable language made it quite easy to do. Um, so even though this is a phylo seminar, HiFi doesn't actually do phylogeny inference per se. Uh, it could, but you really shouldn't use HiFi for it. Uh, its real strength is the inference about the evolutionary process. Um, and our, my research group primarily deals with RNA viruses that do all of these uh, things. They undergo selection, recombination. One has to be careful about selecting appropriate um, evolutionary models to describe the weird things that viruses do and perform evolutionary array tests. HiFi can infer phylogenies using a variety of algorithms, but this is not its primary function. You should use a dedicated package for it. Uh, I often say that for HiFi, uh, the phylogeny is a nuisance parameter. You know you need it uh, to uh, relate uh, sequences that, that are homologous, but you don't really care that it's particularly accurate because a lot of these analyses like selection or combination analyses are actually fairly robust to small error in phylogeny. Um, so the, the strength of HiFi is that uh, even to this day, even though it's a fairly uh, uh, old package, it can ac accommodate possibly the uh, widest range of substitution models into inference quite easily. So you don't actually have to write uh, modules in C and recompile the program or write uh, your plugins in Java. You can just script something quickly, plug it in, and you almost Im implement it runtime. So in that sense, it's kind of like R um, it, or other packages where you do interactive development. Um, so. Um, one of the other things that um, HiFi uh, recently took on is that um, uh, we realized that phylogenetic um, inference is just a first um, step to a lot of other analyses that can be implemented uh, having access to phylogenetic likelihood. So one of the things that um, we've moved into is developing a sort of a dedicated machine learning toolbox and uh, data mining toolbox for sequence analysis. And um, a couple of examples of what's there. So HiFi implements hit markup models it has been used by our collaborators to develop phylo HMMs for things like uh, looking uh, for uh, immune epitopes and viral sequences, including structural data. Uh, Art Poon um, has uh, written an, an excellent module that I think is unparalleled anywhere else, even in uh, packages that specifically deal with Bayesian graphical models, which is, um, so Bayesian graphical models is a, uh, is a class of models which allow you to find, um, in this application, epistatic interactions and do phenotype to genotype mapping. So they basically try to find um, uh, dependencies in, among a large collection of variables in a sort of statistically parsimonious way. Uh, we have a module for stochastic context-free grammars, um, probabilistic model for structured data. We've used it for a variety of things like uh, tree shape analysis, RNA secondary structure. We even used it to encode um, drug treatment regimen as a parameter for um, HIV analysis. Genetic algorithms um, for complex feature selection, and by necessity, we're sort of um, HiFi incorporates now a large collection of specialized error corrections and read mapping routines for um, rapidly evolving pathogens for things like 454 and um, ion torrent uh, data analysis, which have the same type of errors. Uh, HiFi documentation, I'll be the first to admit, it's not nearly as good as it should be, but we're actively working on it. So the wiki is actually being populated very uh, actively. If you're interested in learning about HiFi, I would recommend um, sort of at least leafing through uh, the three book chapters that we wrote. Um, there's one that um, they're all linked here, and then there, you can download them for free. There's one for package description and tutorial. Um, uh, selection analysis, a special uh, chapter if you're interested in detecting natural selection from sequences, and a new one that's going to be coming out in 2012 on recombination, epistasis, and directional evolution. Uh, message boards um, is uh, a place where if you have a specific question, you can go there and post your question, and we'll be very happy to answer it uh, as quickly as possible. 
So um, I don't, probably don't have to um, explain to this audience why uh, it is interesting to fit models, but sometimes, uh, especially for phylogenetic inference, the model is a nuisance parameter uh, because if all you care about is the tree, then you don't really care that the model uh, be particularly accurate, just sufficiently accurate so you get the right tree. So if you flip the question around and say, why do we want to fit models? It's, um, primarily because models describe um, our mechanistic understanding of the evolutionary process. So in the codon models, for example, uh, it's very easy to uh, differentiate synonymous and non-synonymous substitutions, which are fundamentally different. And using such formal models, which you can actually make sufficiently complicated, we can estimate biologically relevant parameters, for instance, branch lengths and divergent times, substitution rates and measures of selection. And um, in our framework, so HiFi, I mean, I don't really, I don't want to say that, you know, we support frequent dystrophasian inference in any particular way. We do what well, HiFi actually implements the appropriate, what we think is the appropriate method for a particular type of model. But what it's particularly good at is computing log likelihoods of data under a model. And um, and if you can do that, then each model can be assigned a goodness of fit, usually derived from its log likelihood score and complexity. And you can compare models to decide which parameters are important or to test which biological quant quantities um, the values of biological quantities can take. Um, and sequence data can be mined for pattern discovery using collections of substitution models. Uh, so I'll, I'll just show you um, the, the purpose of this talk is to give you a, a very superficial flavor of what the package can do to sort of hit the highlights. And if you're interested, I would more than, um, I would be very keen to hear from you directly afterwards, especially if you want to um, um, ask um, if HiFi does something that you're interested in. So I'll just give you a very basic example of um, sort of the uh, the hello world of HiFi, where um, you give um, it a nucleotide alignment, a phylogenetic tree that's uh, supplied, um, a simple substitution model interpreted output. It interprets its output. Uh, I'll be using this data file, which is an eight sequence alignment of um, the P51 protein, which is part of the polymerase protein in HIV, which you can download from um, the following URL. And I'll demonstrate three alternative ways to do it. Um, you can do it through standard analysis, um, graphical user interface, and directly in the batch language to sort of give you a, a flavor of how you can interact with HiFi in three different ways. So um, standard analyses, I'll, I'll just actually, I'll try to do it, um, see if I can open up HiFi and um, bring the window over. So when you start HiFi, depending on which platform you're, uh, you're um, working on, You will um, first be presented with this um, standard console window uh, where you have, um, and, and I actually can't see the menu because I'm running on the Mac, but if you go, um, let, me try, let me try to fix that. I don't think I can actually have um, the menu bar uh, in the window, but if you go to the menu bar and Click on the analysis menu. Under the analysis menu, there are a lot of options of what HiFi implements. So I'll just uh, display this window here, which is a list of standard analyses that cover everything from basic analyses, code and selection, commercialization, data file tools, model comparison, molecular clock, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So for this um, very simple analysis, all we're going to do is um, open up um, one of the um, tabs under basic analyses and um, we can uh, find um, the option that says analyze nucleotide and protein data. There's an, a little bit of an item description below that tells you what this analysis does. And let's just click OK. So HiFi now, what it does behind the scenes, it actually executes a um, script in HiFi batch language, which you'll see in a couple of slides that uh, as a part of its execution, it requires you to supply an alignment file. So we'll go um, to the dialog window and uh, select the P51 file. Um, open it. And the next thing that HiFi wants is, all right, so it read the file. You notice there is um, uh, some diagnostics here that tells you it read the data with eight species and 1,320 sites. Um, the next thing you need to do to perform analysis is to tell it which model to use. So we can use, say, HQI85 model, which also tells you a little bit of what, what it is. Um, the next thing here uh, is, um, and this is sort of um, where um, 
hi-fi does things that are not necessarily um, standard uh, in literature. So uh, by definition, HKY85 is uh, a model that has a branch length for each branch and a shared uh, transition transversion ratio for every for the entire tree. <clears throat> so HiFi actually can do it a, a little bit more generally. It can, um, it can have uh, a local version of this model, which is the first option, which assigns a separate transition transversion ratio to each branch in the tree. So the traditional model, uh, which for instance, if you were to use Beast or Mr. Bayes or PAML or any of the other packages, HKY would be this standard model where model parameters are shared by all branches and branch length are estimated independently. So if we do that, uh, one more thing that's necessary is to supply the tree. And here, um, HiFi identified that this particular alignment file, which is a Nexus file, had a tree in it, and it offers you the option to use it. So we will use it by typing Y or yes in the uh, prompt box, and here we go. So all this analysis really does is um, fit fits a simple uh, model and reports the results, which in this case is um, log likelihood, <clears throat> AAC scores, various parameter values in the tree scaled and branch lengths. All right, so this is uh, this is as simple as it gets with um, the HiFi analysis. So let me move back to my slides. Um, so let's do um, exactly the same thing in the um, in the graphical user interface to see what the um, um, uh, what objects were created behind the scenes. So I'll just um, show you this, which is some screenshots that if you're if, if you're ever interested, there's a tree parameter and model. We'll see them in um, in a second in the actual analysis. Um, so if you go, uh, and again, you can't see the menu in my um, screencast, but if um, if you go to um, a menu option under Windows, there's something called an object inspector, which will pop up another window, which basically tells you uh, these are the things that HiFi currently maintains in memory, and there are trees, data sets, models, and likelihood functions. And if I click on a tree, it's going to open up a little tree viewer that shows uh, the, the, the tree with branch links fitted from this data set. Um, if I go in a likelihood function and click on it, it's going to tell me um, that the, here's the likelihood function that was built on this data set. These are all the model parameters that are involved in this estimation. And, uh, there. <clears throat> and if you actually want to see the specific model that was used to fit the data, you can click on the HKY85 model and it will tell you, it'll actually show you the substitution or the rate matrix of what this model is. So, this is what um, this is sort of the way I view the graphical user interface. It allows you um, to visualize all these analysis components. Um, and again, HiFi doesn't really. I mean, if you want to draw a tree, uh, you probably for publication quality you probably want to go and um, use something that does it well, like FigTree or something else. But uh, for exploration purposes, HiFi <clears throat> puts it all in one spot. Okay. So let me close all of that. And go back to the slides. All right, and now um, this is probably if you've used HiFi um, on the surface, you've probably never seen anything um, in the batch language. But I wanted to show you the implementation of the "Hello World" file um, in HiFi, which is completely self-contained and gives you a little bit of an idea of what the program does. Um, so the language itself is sort of patterned into a very simplistic version of C. So it has, um, and we'll see some parts of it. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to show you any flow control, but it has, you know, if statements, for statements, you can define functions. We'll see some of that later. But sort of the big utility of the language is that it has uh, predefined objects that are domain specific. So for instance, if you want to read a data set from a file, um, you declare an object of the side data set, give it an identifier and acquire it from this function called read data file. Um, so in this case, HiFi was actually going to go there and try to see if it's a valid alignment file. And if it is, um, it'll populate, um, it'll auto detect all the formats it knows about. Um, and if there is a file, there is a valid alignment there, then nucleotide sequences will become an object that holds these sequences. Uh, now the next thing one has to do, so HiFi actually is, um, um, so raw sequences are just that. You can't do an analysis directly on them. You have to tell HiFi a little bit more about how to interpret these sequences 
which is where this object to data set filter uh, comes in. So data set filter is basically a subset of sequences, uh, which, and you also tell HiFi how to interpret the sequences. So in this case, we're just reading nucleotide files, um, a nucleotide file, and we want to use the entire uh, alignment for the analysis. So this is the simplest invocation of a function call where you say uh, create filter, give it an object that is a data set, and yet there's one mandatory argument that tells it uh, what is the evolutionary unit. So in this case, the evolutionary unit is one position, nucleotide. Uh, if all I did was go here and say change it to uh, two, this would create a dinucleotide filter. So now I would actually have my unit of evolution would be um, pairs of side, pair, pairs of columns. Uh, three is codon, and we'll see some examples um, of this later. <clears throat> now, if you've um, worked with evolutionary models, uh, you know that these um, all uh, Markov-based uh, evolutionary models have induced equilibrium frequencies, uh, which sort of by convention are set uh, to match those that your sequences themselves represent. So uh, what's done here in the next step is to uh, take my filter data set and just count the frequencies of ACs and Gs and Ts. And there's some other options that I'm not going to talk about too much, but this basically creates, populates an object called observed frequencies, which contains a matrix uh, with A's, C's, G's, and T's frequencies. Now, what goes on here is sort of probably the key part about um, how HiFi defines models, is that instead of, for instance, um, um, sort of the most traditional packages, say in POP or phylogenetic phylogeny inference packages, you have a list of models that you can select from. So you can say, you know, set models equal HKY85, and then the package does it for you. Whereas what HiFi does, it actually takes a very explicit approach. It says, I'm just going to ask you to define the rate matrix. And this rate matrix, if it has the structure that matches an HKY85 model, will be that model. So uh, you can see uh, it's done in the next line here, where you de first declare a global parameter. Uh, and by global means, it'll actually be shared by all branches in the tree, uh, which will define uh, the standard HKY85 model. And then uh, the rate matrix itself is um, uh, basically just encoding the substitution rates from every character to every other character. So here, uh, HiFi by default uh, treats things as ACs, Gs, and Ts. So for instance, this uh, TR, TRVS, which is a, an abbreviation for transversion, is a substitution rate from an A to a C. And a substitution rate from an A to a G is R times this TRVS, which you can, if, you, if you're familiar with the HKY85 model, or recognize this R as uh, the um, kappa parameter, the transition transversion ratio. And it's very, very explicit. So HiFi will actually treat this as a, as a matrix of expressions, um, and it parses it and identifies all the variables that you can optimize and does that. So once you've defined a matrix, you can define a model, which is a rate matrix combined with uh, the rate frequencies. So now we've defined a model. Um, now, unfortunately, here HiFi does something perlish, which I'm actually going to try to remove uh, or at least make more explicit in a later version. So, if you've ever worked with Perl, Perl, Perl defines um, sort of uh, uh, the a dollar underscore variable. So, when, when you've called a model um, HKY85, this model sort of becomes the default model. And if a construct, if an operation later needs to use a model, it's going to uh, basically uh, but implicitly grab this HKY85 HKY model and attach it uh, to the tree, for instance, which is why the next operation, tree given tree, um, tree identifier given tree, data file tree is an environment variable that basically just pulls the um, tree from the file. And uh, by default, what this will do is attach HKY85 model to every branch. So HiFi can actually uh, allows you to annotate trees to allow to attach different models to different branches if you want, <clears throat> which is something um, uh, that um, at least until recently, and I still, I'm, I'm still not sure anybody lets you do it in a very general way. Nothing else will let you do that. Now you can define a likelihood function which combines the data and the tree. Uh, you can optimize this object and you can print its standard representation to the screen. So uh, by now, I, I mean, I would imagine that everybody's uh, familiar with, um, you know, R or uh, the mathematical of, or NumPy or SciPy or things like that. This is this is sort of conceptually the same. You have access to high-level objects that do uh, the drudgery things for you, like read data files, uh, count frequencies. Uh, but one of the things that we sort of did deliberately is people that want to muck around with a with a batch language need to sort of have an understanding how to write down a rate matrix. So it's both a powerful thing and it's a dangerous thing because if you um, 
uh, hi fi is not going to check that this is the HK5, HKY 85 model. So it's up to you uh, as the user to ensure that it actually is that. So, so um, let me show you a more. You more. Just a quick question. Uh, why did you have to declare the R but not the RTRPS variable? I mean, is, is that effectively taking the incorporating branch length in and that? Yes, oh, yes, okay. that's a very good question. So again, like, um, this is actually very Pythonic. So uh, in Python and in other scripting languages, for instance, if you declare a variable, um, you effectively use it, right? So you can, in, 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 in scripting languages, you don't have to declare most variables before you use them, but you have to declare global variables to tell um, the parser that these variables have to have a particular scope. So they have to apply to a particular place in the model. So in HiFi, basically, if you use something, it's declared as a parameter. So these TRVSs, uh, the first time HiFi sees it, it's going to say, ah, there's a, a parameter in this matrix. And if this matrix is associated with a model, that, that will become a parameter of this model. And because we're not declared global, uh, what you'll see is that, um, let me show you. Let me actually move, move the uh, HiFi window back and um, open up the likelihood function. So the likelihood function, you will see all these parameters called tree name dot uh, branch name dot parameter. So this is what happens when HiFi by default creates local variables. It basically uses this TRVS as ah, every time I see a branch that has HKY85 model, I'm going to create a separate parameter for this branch that has TRVS named with it. Does that make sense? So uh, I think there. There actually are some documents in the wiki that try to explain this a little bit uh, in, in more detail. And, and the first book chapter that I cited um, tries to explain this as well. So let me give you a more involved example of um, using a standard analysis that sort of shows bits and pieces of what HiFi can do. And um, if you want to follow this, um, there is a um, there is a wiki page, which actually is from one of the workshops that Art and I taught uh, in Vancouver, um, who, which is linked here, which um, sort of walks you through that example. So let me open up that page. Slide it into the view. So here's um, here's the page. This is just a HiFi tutorial. And one of the popular um, things that HiFi is used for is uh, using uh, is detecting natural selection at the level of an individual site. So we'll just I'll just show you the first example uh, here. And I'll begin by downloading the, uh, the file and saving it on the uh, desktop. I'm sort of doing things, things fairly quickly because um, if you guys want to follow this later, there are documents that have very, very detailed step-by-step -step instructions of how to do it. So you can... Uh, HiFi has a, um, it'll center things on the screen by default. So I'm uh, just going to move the entire window. So for um, for, a partic for, for a fairly complicated analysis, so let's go under positive selection and click this omnibus analysis, which started out as a quick selection detection, but it actually has about 15,000 different options. So if you go to that, so HiFi is going to now start executing this file and um, It'll prompt you for various things that it needs. So uh, here, because it's a selection analysis, it requires one to uh, define a genetic code. Um, so you can define a genetic code. Uh, now, um, this, this, this is an option. Um, so HiFi can checkpoint things. So if you want, if you have complicated analyses, you can actually write in immediate results out. So this is the option of uh, either starting a new analysis or restoring something from scratch. So, so, sorry, restoring something that yeah, you've done before. So we'll do a new analysis, and this is now a fast A file, so HiFi can understand fast A. Uh, now for now, let's just uh, so this now uh, prompts you for uh, model options. So how do you want to map the model nucleotide bias uh, biases in the codon context? So by default, it's MG94, uh, the codon model crossed with HKY85, or you can use any reversible model that you like. So let's go for default. Okay, now. Uh, the next thing it wants is the tree. There is a tree in this file, so we can accept it. 
now here comes this checkpoint. Where do you want to save the fit for later reuse? So we can just save it to a file. Um, DND has bias parameter options. So let's go for default one, but there are options. And this is all scripted in an external file. Single ancestor counting. There's lots and lots of options implemented by this analysis. So now it goes on and does something. Prompts you for Slack options. I'll just accept the default values at the end of the day. So it prints something to the screen, which is the um, Uh, the default output. But then if you have the graphical user interface, it's actually also going to op open up windows here, which displays a graph of um, DN versus DS. So the plot here, everything on the uh, the X axis are the sites within this alignment. DS is uh, plotted with black lines above the zero and DN with blue lines below the zero. So you can kind of see where the hot and cold spots in this alignment are. And then the, the console um, will actually tell you if any of the sites were found significantly to be under positive selection. So this is actually a published analysis that is um, implemented as a standard module. So if that's all you want to do, uh, you just read the paper and the documentation to understand what the options are, run through it, and you're basically done. Right. So uh, getting back to the slides. Let me move it back so I'm looking at the camera. Uh, just a very brief summary of what types of objects the batch language supports. Uh, data sets, which are alignments, data filters, which are partition alignments, models, which are matrices of parameters and constraints, trees, which are hybrid of topologies and models and parameter values, likelihood functions, which are compositions of data filters plus trees plus models plus uh, structure, and by structure, I mean the structure of the model, so fixed effects, random effects, things like that. It has stochastic context-free grammars, it has embedded SQL databases, and it has a whole lot of other uh, low-level stuff like strings, numbers, matrices, associative arrays, prefix trees, expressions, regular expressions, a large number of built-in functions. I must admit the reason, um, I mean, um, I oftentimes um, find myself just implementing a function in HiFi because for me it's easier than to find a standard, actually download and install and configure a standard library that does it. So, which is why you have statistical distributions there and things like that. So, let me show you um, a very simple example of testing hypotheses, which is the bread and butter of, of HiFi. So, I, um, a model combined with the constraints and parameters uh, in a very simple setting, traditional setting of model testing, this is a hypothesis. And to test, a, to test hypotheses, we fit several models of varying complexity to the data and compare their goodness of fit. And the models that fit the data significantly better than all others is chosen as the best explanation to how the data have arisen. And again, this is a um, just one of the ways to look at it. You can do model averaging, you can do model ranking. There are multiple ways to uh, you see which data explain the model, which model explains the data best. But this is the simplest case. We'll have two models, uh, the null which is the simpler model and the alternative, which is the more complex model. And um, this is this is going back to uh, the roots of HiFi and the relative rate test was one of the things that HiFi actually was designed to implement. And the relative rate test was sort of a very, um, uh, this is going back to the late 1980s. The original paper was published in um, 1992, I believe. And what it was meant to do is um, uh, basically it's a, a very simple version of the molecular clock. But the idea is that for many models, we cannot decouple substitution rates in evolutionary times because they're confounded in this expected substitution for site measure. However, sometimes it's possible to factor out the time to directly compare these evolutionary rates. And one of the first tests to do that was the relative ratio test, which used a null group to uh, what was called the time polarized substitutions. And then it's possible to directly compare branch lengths and make statements about evolutionary rates. So for instance, in a tree on the right, you have two in-group sequences and an out-group sequence. Uh, you presume that um, the time, the evolutionary time from each of those sequences to its most recent common ancestor is the same because this split happened before the outgroup. So um, therefore the time component is the same between the two. And if you want to compare the evolutionary rates between the two uh, branches, then it's enough to compare branch lengths because um, you can estimate branch lengths from the model, uh, but you cannot estimate the time. However, with the setup, the time is the same, so you can factor it out and infer that if these branch lengths are significantly different, then the rates are significantly different. 
Uh, so let's see how to do this in HiFi. So I'll start by showing you the output of, of an unconstrained model, which reports a log likelihood of the tree. And with the outgroup at taxon number three, uh, there's a different log likelihood in a different tree. Now notice the difference between these two trees is that in the first one, all branch lengths are different, but the relative ratio of test forces, sorry, it's, it's a tree that actually enforces the outgroup at taxon one. These two have the same branch length, B and C, as 0.12. So this is a simpler model than the previous one, so log likelihood is worse, and we can do a p-value computation. Um, so again, um, forgive me if this is elementary, but I, um, having taught undergrads for many years, I, I, I've learned that it doesn't hurt to put everything that you want them to remember in the slide. So I'll tell you very briefly about likelihood ratio testing. So in this particular case, uh, the alternative model under unconstrained rates yielded uh, a log likelihood of minus 944 points, while the simpler null, two rates equal in our group at A, model returned a worse log likelihood. Uh, this should be minus. Uh, lower likelihood means worse fit at the cost of an additional, uh, uh, with one fewer parameters. The alternative model has one more parameter than the null. Because of that, it should always beat or at least match the score of the null, even if the latter were the correct model. Uh, and there's uh, a hundred year old um, result in statistics that tells you that if the improvement in fit measured by the appropriate statistic, which is a log likelihood ratio, which in this case is 9.4, twice that, is large enough to be significant, then we can reject the null. And uh, there's uh, under a variety of fairly uh, mild assumptions, which in this case uh, are met, we, we can, uh, the, this likelihood uh, ratio statistic is distributed as the chi squared with um, as many degrees of freedom as there are additional parameters in the alternative model. So in this case, uh, the p-value, which is the probability that the likelihood ratio exceeds the observed value if the null model is correct, is effectively zero. So there's very strong evidence that relative rates do not hold. So this is, um, um, likelihood ratio testing is still a very venerable uh, approach to doing uh, inference from the data. So uh, for, for Bayesians out there, the uh, sort of the comparable arguably more robust, at least for small data samples, is uh, base factor estimation, which um, under an uninformative prior actually reduces to uh, the likelihood ratio. So uh, the HBL file for this analysis is um, something that I'll just go through in detail to make sure that you guys have seen um, how to set up a simple constraint. So first again, uh, we read the data file. So we've seen these two commands before. However, here, the next step um, is um, a likelihood ratio test, or likelihood rate test, sorry, relative rate test requires three sequences. But in this alignment, we actually have eight sequences. So here, I use the filter command to select three sequences. Uh, indexed zero, one, and five, so HiFi is zero based, going back to its C roots. So sequence index zero is the first sequence, sequence index one is the second sequence. So here I'm telling you to take nucleotide sequences, treat them as nucleotides, so this placeholder here is um, the argument for selecting individual sites. If it's left blank, everything is selected. And here's just a string that tell it to select sequences zero, one, and five. Collect frequencies as we've done before. Define the model and tree. Again, we've seen this before, but uh, this is an even simpler model. This is the F81 rate matrix, which has the same rate for all the substitutions. Uh, match it with um, the observed frequencies. Uh, and now, um, uh, there, there's sort of um, an illustration of environment variables in HiFi, which modify its behavior. Uh, so we can define the simple three taxa tree. Uh, there's only one such tree. Uh, and by, by default, HiFi will actually complain if uh, the tips of the tree, which are A, B, and C, do not match the sequence names, because then it doesn't know how to line them up. But in this case, it doesn't actually matter. So we tell HiFi to ignore that and just match sequences left to right. So the first sequence is going to go into A, the second sequence is going to go into B, and the third sequence is going to go into C. Um, all the likelihood function ingredients have been defined. We can define the likelihood function. We can optimize it. And now we can save. Um, so one of the things that the optimizer returns is this parameter values uh, uh, matrix. One of the entries in it is the log likelihood, which we save here. Uh, print the model out. And here comes the the actual constraint and sort of the uh, uh, 
hopefully this demonstrates why uh, at some point we're going to define this domain specific language because if all you want to do is define a constraint this is the one command that does it it basically is the assignment command where you take a variable that is available in the model and assign it which is the semicolon equal which is an old pascal way to assign things um, is um, is assigned to be to have shared the same value as another parameter uh, in the model so what this means is that this function, this variable actually is, is no longer independent. This parameter is bound to another parameter, so it's no longer counted as degrees of freedom, and the model has, has effectively been reduced. So we've made this constraint. HiFi is clever enough to modify the likelihood function behind the scenes to update this, and then optimize on the same likelihood function. We'll actually now use one fewer parameters. Uh, we've done this. We can now uh, compute the twice the log likelihood. Uh, here's an example of using built-in um, functions. So HiFi can do cumulative chi-square distribution. So you can actually do the likelihood ratio test inside the package itself um, with, and return the p-value and now put it to the screen. Okay. So um, I would be remiss not to mention that the three types of um, parameters that evolutionary models on HiFi support. Uh, mixing them in a single analysis permits um, what I would call unique flexibility. The local model parameters, which are attached to an individual branch in the tree, be it uh, branch lengths, uh, branch specific DNDS ratio, for example, branch substitution rate, uh, global parameters, which are shared by many branches in a single tree or multiple trees, for instance, base frequencies, transition transversion ratios, or hyperparameters, for instance, uh, shape of the gamma distribution or mixing coefficients if you have some phylo HMM, for example, or phylo uh, random effects model. And category variables, which uh, are those that basically get integrated out, so they're important for defining unobserved um, variable things like substitution rates. So the uh, plus gamma model is a category variable. So distribution and substitution rates across sites, model mixture distribution. Uh, an example of a uh, model with global local parameters um, is um, uh, the most common example is linear specific selection, or at least not, I wouldn't call it the most common, but it's something that HiFi has been used for a lot. Uh, and here's, I'll give you a practical example where we'll consider HIV sequences from two immunologically linked patients, the source and the recipient. So one of them here, the pink circle is the source, the purple is the recipient, and the branch that separates the two is the transmission branch. So in this tree, biologically, we would expect the virus to experience at least three different selective environments uh, in one patient and another, and upon transmission. So uh, we might assume a priori that selection, which is measured by DNDS, will vary across lineages. And the setup of a model like this in high five would be to define the most general model first, for example, the model where each branch has its own DNDS ratio, or to be more precise, a pair of rates, synonymous and non-synonymous rates, fit this model as the alternative, and then constrain the parameters to be the same within the group of branches to define nulls. So fit the model and perform likelihood ratio test. Uh, example of constraints in high five. Uh, so here's the simplest one, assign a value. So this is actually not a constraint, this is an initialization. Uh, you can bind two variables, so y um, is always equal to x. You can limit the range of a variable by um, an assigned constraint. You can define a global parameter. So this is a typical model parameter in HiFi. And you have convenience functions which basically traverse the tree and apply the same constraint to all branches in the tree. Okay. Uh, Another example, a uh, test for quality of transition transversion ratio in an exon intron exon data set between exons and the intron to show you how you do mixed data in HiFi. Uh, here's an example of using a standard library, which I haven't seen before. So HiFi has 45,000 lines of code lying around, which define a lot of utility things like genetic codes. So when you issue a command load function library, uh, choose genetic code. That'll do what it advertises. It'll load all the functions necessary to choose and define a genetic code. Uh, now, read a filter uh, from this intron nexon, uh, exon dot next. Uh, all these batch files are working, so you can actually, you know, afterwards if you're interested in these files, you can get from uh, the URL uh, on HiFi that I posted a couple of slides ago. So you can actually just paste them into a text editor and uh, run them in HiFi and see what happens. <clears throat> Notice one, one of the things I should say is that. Uh, uh, if you've done any scripting's path, uh, relative paths are important. So HiFi by default uh, will work with the path uh, in which this batch file itself resides. So for example, intron exon.next in this case is expected to be in the same directory as the batch file itself. 
you can modify that if you want. Uh, so here, uh, data set filter is um, simply taking the sequences and taking a part of them now. So notice there's another type of constraint here where you can define a range, couple it with another range to select discontinuous regions. There's another way to deal um, with this. You can define a string constraint here, which actually combines four different ranges. And this actually becomes the exon. But the, notice the difference between uh, the intron create filter and the exon create filter, where here we tell the same underlying data set that it's now, it now needs to be treated as codons, which is what this three tells it to do, using the filter string to select a subset of sites. And then there's another argument uh, which actually tells it which of the sites are not valid. So TAA, TAG, and TGA in the universal genetic code, these are not allowed. Harvest frequencies, when a different frequencies, four by three matrix position specific here, or four by one matrix. Uh, define and constrain the models. HKY85, as we've seen before. Now, um, I don't want to define a codon model explicitly because it actually, you know, would be 37 or like 700 uh, lines to assign each entry in the matrix. So they're actually standard files that will do it for you, which I'm just loading here. Um, and defining an HKY, defining uh, the codon version of this model. Uh, and define a tree string. Notice here now I'm actually combining, I'm using two different trees. So one is going to be an exon tree and one is going to be an intron tree. So the exon tree should evolve under a codon model, which is what I'm telling it to do here, use MG94. And the intron tree should be evolving under a nucleotide model. So I'm telling the code to use HKY85. And here's all you need to do to combine uh, these two data sets and two different trees into a single likelihood function. You just lob them together. You just say likelihood function now takes exon and exon tree and intron and intron tree, and this is all now in one analysis. So by default, all the parameters are independent, so it's going to do um, a, a joint optimization with separate branch links, separate everything, except the global parameters, because global parameters are shared by the entire analysis. Um, and here's what I'm, here's the constraint to take um, uh, the kappa parameter um, or the transition transversion parameter in the nucleotide model, the transition transversion parameter in the uh, Code on model, constrain them at the likelihood function and perform the likelihood ratio test, which in this case is significant. So in this particular data set, um, transitions and transversions happen at different rates between introns and exons, which is not too hard to believe. At least the assumption is that, <coughs> uh, no, actually, I'm not going to talk too much about the biology of this example. Uh, another uh, big powerful component of PyFi is that we're doing a lot of model development and uh, none of these models um, are uh, have closed form solutions. So you can never get um, you know, the closed form for um, the variance of a particular parameter estimator or how well the model does in a particular setting. So we invariably uh, resort to using simulations to uh, evaluate how well a model um, works or compute uh, say parametric bootstrap estimates of a particular parameter. Uh, so Hawkeye permits the user to simulate data from any likelihood function object parametrically with a single command. So if you have a likelihood function, in order to simulate data from this likelihood function, you just call this construct, data set, simulated data set, simulate from likelihood function. So regardless of the complexity of your likelihood function, it can be one partition, it can be multiple partitions with a complicated substitution model. It actually does a lot of things under the hood to make sure that it simulates into the correct model. So if you can define a likelihood function, you can simulate from it. Uh, you can also do non-parametric, so you just, um, so non-parametric for those of you statistically inclined, it just assumes that the data come from the multinomial distribution with no particular model. So this is just sample the replacement. Okay, I'm <clears throat> getting uh, near the end of my talk. So um, uh, practically, um, I would like to mention two more things. The first one, so these standard analyses exist and they do a lot of things, uh, but as you might have seen, for one of them, you need to enter a lot of options manually which if you want to apply the same analysis to a um, thousand genes from a genome-wide comparison, that would become quite tedious. So HiFi provides a mechanism to write wrapper files to call other HBL files with predefined parameters. And this feature makes it possible to carry out the same analysis over a large collection of files and to perform a multi-step analysis or to stick HiFi into a pipeline. And all you do is basically, um, so this is very similar to an input redirect uh, for um, shells or you know Unix consoles where uh, you uh, basically uh, list all the options that you want to pass the analysis in the order that we're expecting to receive them. So for instance, for this analysis, 
you first apply the universal genetic code, then which file you want to be analyzed, the model, the parameters of the model, and then you pass this to the call to the standard analysis that expects these options, which will then take them and execute them. And um, one of the things that we're um, sort of doing now a lot is um, integrating um, HiFi uh, into uh, pipelines that use Python and R, uh, but mostly Python. So HiFi can be compiled um, out of the box as a Python or R module and called directly from those languages. Uh, if you're working with Python, which we do, there's a, um, a really nice wrapper um, on GitHub, which you can get, it's called HiPy, uh, that uh, Lance um, Pepler, the graduate student in my group wrote, uh, which makes it very easy to pass things between Python and um, HiFi and then extract results from HiFi. So here's an example of calling uh, this um, module in Python. So you import HiFi interface, instantiate a HiFi interface, so there's some utility functions which basically pass parameters to HiFi. Um, so this wrapper is clever enough to convert between Python objects and HiFi objects. So you pass, uh, you know, a dictionary to HiFi. It's going to be behind the scenes converted to a format that HiFi can understand. Then you run um, HiFi instance. Um, you can grab standard input, standard output, standard error, do something with it, and then there's an accessor function which, after the analysis is done, you can retrieve uh, things from HiFi by ID and by type. So in this case, so this is actually a utility wrapper to uh, have HiFi do an error correction on 454 data, which uh, as a result returns um, an alignment string, which you can um, then manipulate in, in Python. <clears throat> and um, um, HiFi is also MPI aware, so it, it, it can run on a distributed computer cluster. Uh, most of the parallelism is achieved by scripting in HBL itself, although there are some lightweight functions which are automatically parallelized over MPI. It's actually rather difficult to achieve efficient parallelization over MPI because there are communication latencies, but there are certain things that it will do for you without um, any um, input from the user. Um, and likelihood functions and snippets of HBL code can be sent to slave nodes and results retrieved. So um, here's an example of executing the same analysis on a bunch of files in HiFi using the library called uh, MPI tools, which will actually dispatch each analysis to a separate node and do something to it. <clears throat> so here's, um, we'll actually go to the last line. Well, the logic of this file is that, uh, what, what, what at least what I've seen users do a lot, they have a directory with a bunch of files, and they want to do the same thing to every file, um, and these files are usually alignments. So HiFi is, is going to prompt for um, the list of files here, then it's going to use um, a built-in function to scan, and this is where its C origins are showing F scan F, prompt for file, which means ask the user which file to use, then read it as lines and put this into file path link, file path list, then echo this, and then pass this to a utility function, which is an MPI tools, which is going to take this file path list, run this analysis on it um, without reporting progress, using callback functions to set up each analysis and to process each analysis. So this is sort of a if, 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 if you want to use HiFi to script the same analysis, you would actually use exactly this code, just modifying callback. Uh, and here's a very simple example of the low level of what HiFi is actually doing. It has these commands called um, MPI send and MPI receive. So here, which actually communicates between different instances in the process. So I think um, with this, I'm out of time. And I will just conclude by saying that um, uh, so what I would like you to um, basically um, yeah, remember from uh, this talk is uh, you know, go to the HiFi webpage and if you have questions, and if you want to use HiFi, post messages on our message board or email me. This was uh, meant to sort of give you a little overview of um, what HiFi uh, does with, with an emphasis on um, the behind the scenes stuff, the, the actual um, demonstration of uh, the scripting language. Um, but um, HiFi, uh, if you um, uh, if you if you actually want to script something in HiFi, then then um, I would encourage you to uh, you know, talk to me or one of the members of my group. But uh, we also try to put all of the popular analyses on DataMonkey that um, makes it as easy as possible for the users to execute things that we believe um, will be popular, or at least you know basically now we try to implement everything that we publish as a new method in DataMonkey, so it's reproducible and accessible 